It's December 26, 1993. The University of Wisconsin band reconvenes in Madison for a refresher rehearsal. They're going to the Rose Bowl. It's been 31 years since the Badger band last performed in Pasadena, and there have been thousands of former band members who never had the chance to march into the Rose Bowl. And now, everybody sing Varsity. Every one of these UW musicians is determined to make the most of this exceptional opportunity. It's December 27th, and it's early. 250 students load their luggage onto buses for the quick trip to the Dane County Airport. And then California, here we come. coast accommodations facilities and the weather couldn't be more perfect the rehearsal field at Santa Monica High School is just a 60 second walk from the band's hotel the temperature is 72 above zero and the sky is clear and smog free it must be a good omen match your feet match your feet oh, oh. Wisconsin has arrived. The band rehearses, and that hits the beach. Tuesday, December 28th, a pattern is beginning to form. First breakfast. Next, a two-hour rehearsal.
then an appearance at one of the many Southern California tourist attractions. And after performing, the band gets to play the part of tourist. First stop, Knott's Berry Farm. Wednesday, December 29th, we're in Disneyland. The band is scheduled to participate in the taping of a CBS special at Disneyland. Badger fans crowd into the park to watch the proceedings, and in the process, set an all-time attendance record for the park. That night, a small contingent of the band is the opening act for the Big Ten Dinner of Champions. It's a star-studded affair featuring many Hollywood stars, though all are dwarfed by Madison's own Chris Farley from Saturday Night Live. Thursday, December 30th, following the now standard early morning rehearsal, the band has an unusual morning of free time. By afternoon, it's back to work. This time to the Century Plaza for what has to be the largest and craziest Badger pep rally ever staged on the West Coast. That night following the frenzy of the Badger pep rally, the band keeps it going with an impromptu concert on the Santa Monica Pier that draws 5,000 rabid Badger fans.
Friday, December 31st, the band returns to the pattern of breakfast, rehearsal, and performance. On this day, they bust to Universal Studios. That night, the band celebrates New Year's Eve at 10 o'clock, midnight Madison time. By 10.30, lights are out. The next day is a dream waiting to come true. Even if it means breakfast at 4 a.m. and the prospect of a five and a half mile marching marathon called the Rose Parade. As the sun came up over the San Gabriel Mountains, it was obvious it was going to be a perfect day. Even though each band member knows they'll be marching and playing for two and a half hours without rest, as they make their right turn onto Colorado Boulevard, they experience a thrill that will never be forgotten. And for the next five miles, they are welcomed and cheered by Badger Faithful, who line the entire parade route. Following the parade, the band gets a brief rest. We're getting ready to leave for the Rose Bowl, and this is the official Rose Bowl coffee. Lunch, and then it's on the bus to the stadium. Finally, they see it, the Rose Bowl. As the band lines up to enter the stadium, just as they have so many times at Camp Randall, they suddenly realize just how many Badger fans are in Southern California. Almost as much red in the stands here as at home. As the band marches onto the field, the roar of the crowd is overwhelming. Game, the traditional run on entrance, a salute to Barry's Badgers and the Wisconsin version of the 1812 Overture.
Anyone who has ever worn a Wisconsin band uniform has imagined themselves performing at halftime of the Rose Bowl. And now 220 highly charged young men and women are going to see that dream come true. Mike Lecrone has chosen a performance that demonstrates the fun, the energy, the entertainment, the exuberance, and the brashness that Badger fans have come to expect every football Saturday in Camp Randall. And with it, rock and roll was born. Today, every facet of popular music has been influenced by such artists as Little Richard, Matt Domino, Chuck Berry, and Buddy Holly. The Wisconsin Band pays tribute to these pioneers and their music as we salute the roots of rock and roll with some early rockers.
and it's impossible to overlook the godfather of soul, James Brown. It's a salute to the legends of rock and roll and concludes with a song that Elvis performed throughout the final days of his career. It seems to suggest the attitude the Wisconsin fans, the team, and the band have demonstrated throughout their unbelievable Rose Bowl experience. My way. Barry's Badgers make believers out of Pac-10 fans. 
after 58 minutes of solid offense and hard-nosed defense, Wisconsin has the lead, 21 to 16. But UCLA has the ball. They go quickly. No, you can't do that. You want to throw the ball. You got no timeouts. You got no timeouts. Throw the ball. That's it. It's over. It's over. It's over. Cook tried to surprise him, tried to run it up the middle. Didn't have a timeout to save him. Was knocked down. The clock runs out. The Wisconsin Badgers have defeated the UCLA. Victory. The first ever for Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl. And you know that the fifth quarter is going to be very, very special. As the band nears the end of their long but highly rewarding day, each member looks around to absorb everything that has happened. The performance, the game, the crowd, their relationship to each other, the moment. These would be memories they would carry for the rest of their lives on Wisconsin.